Acts chapter number 20, verse number 28 and verse number 29. And the Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. I am very interested tonight in verse number 29, where he talks about that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. I want to say this right here that no church uh, is able to escape the fact that there are wolves amongst us. They are everywhere. Everywhere I've been, everywhere I'm sure it is up here like it is down there, everybody that goes to church isn't a good person. I want to, I want to preach just a simple thought tonight on how to whip the wolves. How to whip the wolves. You'll find in verse number 18, Paul is telling the Ephesian elders in the Ephesian church, he says at the end of the latter end of verse number 18, after what manner I have been with you all at all seasons. He said, I've been with y'all in the wintertime. I've been with y'all in the springtime. I've been with you in the summertime. I've even been with you in the fall time. What Paul is telling me there is he has seen the church go up and down. Church has seasons. I wish every season was, was uh, hunky-dory. Everything was fine. But the truth of the matter is, uh, Pastor Foster, is that's not the case. The church is almost like a roller coaster. You have good seasons and you got kind of not bad seasons. I just say out of seasons. No season in church is a bad season. It, every season, I ain't got time to preach it, but every season teaches you things about the church. And we find here he gets down to verse number 24, and he tells us about the path. Look at verse number 24. Paul said this, but none of these things move me. Boy, I like these words. Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Can I say this path? There is a conclusion to this path. Found in verse number 24. So that I might finish. Finish. Can I say this? There's a lot of people not finishing in their course for God. We are living in the days when it, the devil has made it so easy to quit and give up on God. I'm astounded tonight at the number here. I'm, I'm absolutely blown away. Here in the past, man, probably seven, eight months of our ministry, boy, I went to church on Sunday nights. Uh, Brother Peter, and there's, there may be, maybe at the most I've seen on a Sunday night service where we've been preaching at is maybe 25 people. You know why people stop finishing? What used to matter don't matter anymore. What used to be important, what used to be first, is not important anymore. I know several folks in here who drive hours plus just to come to the house of God. Can I say this? Ladies and gentlemen, it's not time to quit on this race of God. It is time for us to finish. 2 Timothy 4 verse number 7. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. John 17 verse number 4. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest this me to do. One man said this, it is not the first but the last step in the race. It is, not, it is the last shot in the basket. It is the last volley in tennis. It is the last swing of bat that makes the lasting difference. For that is where the game is won and that is why you must always finish strong. One man said this also, resistance is the greatest just before the finish line. And I say, ladies and gentlemen, it's not time to quit. The conclusion to this path, the cheer of this path, look there at verse number 24. So that I might finish my course, here's a word that upsets us, with joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I, I, man, I'm telling you, I, I preach to some of the most depressed people man, in the churches we've been in. It's almost like walking into a morgue. 
Nobody's happy no more. We all, we all be honest, we all got, uh, listen, not everybody, not just one person's groceries went up, everybody's groceries went up. Right. Amen. Right. amen. Paychecks didn't, but groceries did. Say amen right there. Amen. You're not the only one that the power bills went up. And guess what? We're all in this thing together. You're not the only one pumping gas in your car that went up. Man, it used to, you could go to the gas station and brother Christian people say, how you doing today? How you doing? Man, you say that people nowadays, their, their face just freezes. You know why? There's no more joy. The Christian people, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why we've come to this point in our life where we are so defeated and, and so overwhelmed and, and so worried about what's going on. Can I say this? If the Bible is true, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. My joy isn't dependent on if gas goes up or gas goes down. My joy isn't dependent on if Aldi's going to be higher this week or next week, if, if Walmart's going to go up on the sugar free ice cream say amen right there my joy is independent on that because those things of the world change those bills change everything around me changes but my joy is anchored in another world things may change and the government's going to change here soon but guess what's not going to change the word of God and God and my joy isn't in things my joy is in the son of God so many people have their joy in things and when things let them down boy it's rough dad used to say when he was pastoring when Clemson played South Carolina it was the most miserable Sunday he had preaching cause half the church was Gamecocks God help them all say amen right there half of them was Clemson but whatever team won, there's going to be half the church that comes in. Man, just to, why even come? Somebody help me right there. Uh, you, you know the service is going to be terrible, especially if Clemson loses. Man, you can forget it. You know what people lets me know? Their joy is not based in the Lord. There was a man, I don't know if you remember him, Brother Shorty Childs. Boy, he sat over here on the left side of Victory Baptist Church. And boy, I, I remember that man, uh, man, Brother Adrian, just like it was yesterday. He got up in our index pulpit one time and boy, Shorty come down when I believe it was throat cancer and from there it just spread all over. He was about to go have his first treatment. And boy, he mounted the pulpit there and he got up and man, just a scrawny of a man had glasses, but boy, he was there every time the door was open. He got a hold of that pulpit and this is what this man that, that has life-threatening cancer said. He said, cancer is just a word. Little things happen to us, knocks us for a loop. This man, every single service for months on out, he, he, the man, he lost his voice. He couldn't even talk no more. But I'd see that man of God. He'd come in about five till and come all the way down the left side of the church. He would just park right over yonder on the left. But we'd have one of them gully washers like y'all did this morning. Even when it wasn't, it was dead or maybe to four o'clock in the morning. Miss Kathy, I'd watch old shorty childs over here. He would grab that little feeble hand. Knowing now, knowing his life... The don't have much longer. Knowing how bad his life is. Knowing how bad he had it at home. Knowing he didn't have many days to live. But I'd see him, Brother Aaron, lift that little feeble hand. He, I'd see that little hand wobble a little bit. That don't do nothing for y'all, but it done something for me. Can I say, man, he was going through something like we've never been through before. And yet he'd come to church and lift that little hand up. I'd see that little hand shake. You know what he says. Listen, cancer man, I'm about to feel a preaching. Amen. Cancer may have took my voice, but cancer can't take the Jesus out of my heart. Amen. Can I say tonight, ladies and gentlemen, don't let what you're going through rob you of the joy the Lord gives. His joy is full. His joy is overflowing. You say, preacher, it's bad. We serve a mighty good God. You say, preacher, I'm going through it. I'm glad I know one who can help us get through. My joy isn't based in things. My joy is based in the Son of God. Yeah.
for the joy. Psalms 32, verse number 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Oh my, boy, the, by the cheer of this path. There is the certification of this path. What's, what's the purpose of this path? The letter in of verse number 24. He said to testify, to make known, to witness the gospel of the grace of God. You know why Paul finished his course and was happy? Because his life was a testament of what God can do. I say this, y'all know this, sometimes our life is the only Bible that some people may read. Rather good or rather bad, our life is a lie. The certification of this path. Not only the path, but we find the plan. Look there at verse number 28. The Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made ye overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. The plan, there's three things I see here. Number one, he says, Take heed. That word heed means to give extra careful attention to. When I wake up in the morning, I try in that little apartment of ours. We finally got out of the camper. Say amen. Two, two babies and two adults don't fit good in one. Somebody help me right there. We got three men. We 1,400 square feet to us is like a mansion right now. Amen. Well, Carter, man, I think he's got a, little, got a little runner mat in there, and he takes off like an airplane. I mean, man, he's wide open. But every morning I wake up, I'm, I'm very careful, and I'm very, I give heed to where I'm walking. Well, I was supposed to have a study in that apartment. I was supposed to. But then Carter had more toys than I had books. Somebody say amen right there. So Carter's toy room, he's got supposedly one. They're all over the house. Amen. It drives my OCD nuts. Amen. I, I don't know what to do with myself. But you know what I do in the morning? I take heed where I walk. I don't know who invented toys, but why, why did they make pointy toys? Somebody say amen right there. Legos, you know, why didn't they make them round and cushiony? Amen. Man, hot wheel cars, man, those things hurt on your foot. Amen. I take heed to that. You know what I do when I get up? I go get my coffee. You know what I do? I look around. I take heed to where I'm going. Amen. I want to help you here in these days tonight. You better be very, very careful and aware, aware of who you surround yourself and what you listen to. Not everybody that carries a Bible is a true believer. We was at the motel and the guy said, man, he said, what y'all doing? I said, man, we're up here preaching. He said, man, that's great. I go to some Catholic. He said, we're Catholic. I said, oh, man. He said, we're on the same team. I was about to say, no, sir, we're not. Amen. Amen. We, we on two different paths, bub. Amen. amen. You're wrong and I'm right. Say amen right there. Amen. He said, I'm studying for ministerial stuff and I'm, going, I'm studying to be a deacon. I said, bless your heart. Boy, he got a lot to learn. Amen. Trying to study to be a deacon, praise God. He got a lot to learn. Amen. I said, man, you want the same path. But can I say, all because he was there and he started talking to us, he said, man, we're in the same thing. I said, no, sir. I said, man, I'm, I'm a preacher. You say, oh, preacher, don't matter who I listen to. Preacher, don't matter what podcast I listen to. I say this right here. It just takes one word for the devil to implant in your mind to go against this word. And then your life can be total opposite. There's people tonight that don't go to church anymore, to a Bible-believing church anymore, because man's word twisted God's word, and they believe man's word instead of God's word. I'm very careful. I, I, I like listening to people. I like reading after people. But I'm very careful when somebody gives me a book. I had a man donate me a whole commentary section on Oliver B. Green. You know what I got? I ain't got to worry about looking into that. You know why? Because I know who it is. There was a guy who gave me the book the other day. Boy, I started looking at it, started reading about the author, and this guy is an atheist writing about Christianity. That's like me trying to tell you how to raise babies and I don't have any. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. you got to take heed. You say, preacher, why is this so important? Matthew Henry said, you may have many eyes on you. 
some to take example by you, others to pick quarrels with you, and therefore you ought to take heed to yourselves. Be very careful. He said, take heed. Then he also said this at the middle verse of that. Over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Not only to take heed, but he said to oversee. You know what your pastor is? He is the overseer here. Emmanuel Baptist Church. Notice it says here that he didn't, he didn't put himself into this thing. A man would be crazy. Hear me, y'all. A man would be out of his mind if he said, I want to be a pastor. What a blessing that would be. Crazy. Somebody say amen right there. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm praying about something. and I, I really, my flesh, I'm like, flesh, what are you doing, man? He would be crazy to say, this is what I want to be when I grow up. Say amen right there. I love, man, I lived in one and I, I've learned a whole lot more than I probably should have ever learned. Amen. But you know what? You would be crazy to say, Phil, I want to be a pastor. What a, what a great thing. It is a great thing. But can I say this? He didn't call himself into it. Right. Say, preacher, what you're talking about. Look at verse 28. Over which the, I like this, capital H and capital G, over which the Holy Ghost... You know why he's pastoring a church and why God is blessing like he is? It's because he didn't put himself into it. God put him into it. Yeah. Amen. If God puts you into something, it's going to be different than putting your own self in. Right. He said to he to oversee. Can I say, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a have to calling. Right. It's not a have to preach. It's a get to preach. Right. What a blessing to take key to oversee. Then notice what he said the latter end of verse number 28. Over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. One thing I've learned very, very briefly there under my dad is the fact wolves don't like this right here. People say, ah, oh, preacher, I didn't like that. You know what you're telling me? You're a wolf. You know what? Well, I've learned about sheep. Sheep like it from Genesis chapter 1. Preacher can turn over there preaching Genesis and they're all about it. Preacher can get over there and turn in Titus and Philemon and Hebrews and James. Amen, preacher, that's good. But wolves will say, ah, I don't like that. I was preaching the other day at a little church and honest before God, this lady, oh, I've never seen this before in my life. Uh, she stuck her fingers in her ears while I was a preaching. I ain't gonna lie, I got a little fleshly. Say amen right there. Say, preacher, what'd you do? I cranked her up a knot. Somebody say amen. Amen. Turn her volume up a little bit. Amen. Tell sound man, jack her up a little bit. Amen. Preacher, she was sitting there and she did this business. I got to thinking, wonder if she goes home and watches that TV on mute. What if she watches the radio on mute? And that word through the grapevine said she don't like my style of preaching. Ah. You know why she don't like it? Because I preach truth. You know what I've learned? Preaching truth is never popular. You know, wolves don't like truth. Wolves don't like when you, you hit on their pack and what they're about to scheme together. Wolves don't like that. Listen, y'all, you hear me now. I know this church is a good church. I'm told I'm, not one of the best. I'm a member of, the, of this church. Say amen. It's the best church. Amen. I, amen right there. Somebody say amen. I believe it's the best one. Amen. But I want you to hear me now. You've got to be careful right. not to get so focused on how good it is and how wonderful it is that you forget the fact there are wolves out here ready to come in. Amen and devour the church oh my there's the predator verse 29 Paul said this the certainty of this predator he said for I know this can I say this Paul has had an occasion or two with a wolf your preacher's been in this thing a while I've ran into some wolves 
What thing about wolves when you first start hanging out with a wolf? They're like a little puppy. They got to have all of the attention. Listen, I'm just going to preach y'all what's in my heart. I probably ain't going to be here too much longer, but I'm just going to give it to you, okay? Just hang with me. Hang with me. Wolf has to have all the attention. Wolves like to be petted. Amen. Amen. Wolves don't like truth. Well, I just can't believe that preacher would preach on now. Ooh, say Amen. Ah, I can't believe Deacon Wild. You know, every time that you rebuttal and you go against not what Brother Foster, but the Word of God, you know what you're doing? You're howling. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my. Help me, Lord. The certainty, he said, I know this. Look at verse number 29. That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Notice this last phrase now. Not sparing the flock. The certainty of this predator, but there is the catastrophe of this predator. This wolf's job is to destroy a flock. He don't care how small they are. He don't care how big they are. He don't care if your pastor's, your shepherd has been here for 25 or 50 years. It don't matter to a wolf. Only, you hear me now, the only thing a wolf is looking for is small opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm just preaching you in my heart now. Man, I'm telling you, a, a, the wolf just needs a small opportunity. Yeah. They say that a wolf can run up to 40 miles an hour. Wow. That's pretty quick. I was teasing them boys the other day. Was it Daniel? I believe you said you ran 21. Amen. Wolf can double that. How about that? 40 miles an hour. They say is it, it is essential requirement for the survival of wolf groups is to have a large territory that they can, this is a big key word, dominate. Yes. Yes. Wolves can adapt. I've seen this to many ecosystems. Wolves have a sociable behavior. You'll never, if you normally see one wolf, there's always some around him somewhere. You hear me now? Hear me. Wolves don't live by themselves, they live in packs. Packs can consist between 18 and 20 members. They say that in every pack, there is always one male leader and one female leader. Wolves have two layers of fur. The outer layer which repels the water. What's that represent? The word of God. And the dirt and the inner layer that is waterproof. Listen to this now. The colors of the wolf's hair varies depending on the area it lives in. You know what a wolf can do? A wolf can blend in. Wolf can sit here Sunday after Sunday night after Wednesday night and nobody will ever know. Amen. Wolves howl when they are rallying for a hunt. They feed on animals that are, listen to this now, that are available. Oh man, help me Lord. A wolf always eats what it catches completely. Wolves don't kill for sport. They kill for survival. You know what wolves do? They kill not because it's fun. They do it because that's how they survive. Mm. Wolves thrive on killing. Wolves thrive on causing a church like this and just take one little wolf to come in here and the pack be on the outside. It would just take one little wolf in here to come get under somebody's skin, rub you the wrong way, and he can sit back and you will kill yourself from the inside out. The wolf. Wolves are scavengers. The wolf. Listen to this now. Boy, this is good. You say, preacher, where you find this at? Google. Somebody say amen right there. <laughs> Everything on Google is true. Say amen. The wolf. Boy, this is good. The wolf will approach the prey in the opposite direction of the wind yeah. to avoid the other, well, the animal from detecting the wolf's scent. 
You know what wolves don't like? They don't like the water because their skin repels it. But you know we don't like services like we had here this morning. You know why? Because it points them out. Wolves, boy, the wind begin to blow. No wolf just sit there. You know why they don't like it? Because it's giving them away. You know why a wolf tries to distract and to disrupt like the wind was blowing this morning? You know why? Because it's going to point them out. The wind, they don't like the water and they don't like the wind. Well, listen to this now. The main reasons wolves eat sheep is their lack of natural defense instincts. Right. And I see this, ladies and gentlemen. When, when, a wolf, when a wolf comes to find sheep, when a wolf, they say, if he can just get one sheep alone, if he can just get one sheep of a flock, if he can just find one sheep, I'm going to say that again, if he can just find one sheep that is all by itself, that's not eating in the pasture, that's not eating the green grass, if he can get one little sheep of a flock all by himself, they say that wolf can strike. He don't have to bite. He don't have to, man, man come at that little sheep. All he has to do is look in that sheep's eyes. That wolf looks in that sheep's eyes and that sheep gets instantaneously filled with fear. They say that wolf will creep back in the shadows and that one little sheep that's a part of that big flock Hear me now. If that wolf can cause fear in one little sheep, that wolf creeps back in the shadows. And that one little sheep that now has seen a wolf and caused fear in its mind will go back to the flock, not meaningful, not on purpose, but they say that little sheep will start running circles because of the fear that it saw in the wolf's eyes. The, the little sheep don't have no bite marks. The little sheep don't have no call marks. He's just saw something. I feel a little preach right here. He saw something that caused fear in his eyes. And now instead of going back trusting the shepherd, now instead of going back relying on each other, Brother Aaron, they say that little sheep will start running in circles, not on purpose, not meaningful, but he will start trampling other sheep because of the fear that the wolf put in his mind. Wow. You know what I've seen? The wolf don't have to come in here and sit among us. If he out there in this world can cause a little fear here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, or maybe the wolf's done looked at you. Maybe he's done said it's over. Maybe he's done said you're a lost cause. I don't know if that wolf has told you, but I want to help you here. That wolf is a liar. Right. Amen. 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 That fear is not of God. Right. Amen. Amen. That fear is not of God. That little sheep will come in and will start trampling other sheep. Other little innocent sheep are now, Preacher Foster, there. They wake up and they're limping. And they're hurt by their own sheep. Wow. Wow. Not on purpose. Not because it was, it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a bit, I, I meant to do this. It's because that one sheep is so full of fear. Mm. Only thing he can think about as that fear from the wolf. Mm -hmm. You may be here tonight, but fear has grasped your mind. The wolf has spoken into you. You come in here, you don't have no call marks, you don't have no bite marks on you from the wolf, but he has caused fear in your mind. Mm -hmm. 
When you go to sleep, fear. When you wake up, fear. When you, when you try to go to work, you try to do what you're supposed to do. It causes fear. And instead of coming here, getting on like it was this morning, you can't even enjoy it no more. So you know what you do? You accidentally start running into other sheep. Yeah. Uh-oh. Now there's maybe few sheep in here. Boy, limping a little different. All because of the fear that the wolf has drove into the sheep. I want to help you tonight. You don't have to be scared of the wolf. You say, preacher, why? Number one, it's because we got a shepherd. Psalm says, the Lord is my I shall not want. Not only you got a shepherd, but you got shields. There's things the Lord has placed in our life to keep the wolves out. But I'm done here. Brother Daniel, would you come just play something? Not only you have a shepherd, you got shield, but I'm done right here. The sheep, the sheep have, boy, a system they use. The sheep have a natural instinct that is given to them by God. They say that one sheep's causing around. You know what they do? Oh, I don't know how they talk. My little boy says, bye, amen. I guess that's right, amen. I don't know, no different, amen. Bye, amen. He has a little sheep at home and I look at that thing all the time. He's starting to make all them sounds. What he does... Those sheep have a natural instinct built into them. There's fear in the flock. So the best thing, Brother Bob, Brother Josh, Brother Christian, those sheep do is they take all the little ones. They take all the little sheep and they put them in a tight-knit group. Then they say they, those adult sheep, they face their behinds to that little group of kids. All of them sheep said they get in a big old circle. And Brother Christian, what they do, they start backing up. They start backing up. I ain't too smart, but the more closer you do this, what? The tighter it becomes. They start compressing. Hind end to hind end. The sheep keep backing up. Till there's no more move to back up. You know what the sheep say to the wolf that caused fear? You may have got one, but you're not getting no more. The best defense for a wolf a sheep can do. Listen to me now. Is to rely on another sheep. Amen. I want to say this tonight. You don't realize this until you go through something. But we need each other. Amen. Maybe tonight you're here. Ah, Brother Donald's wife, I didn't know, had no idea. Had no idea you was battling that. Had no I seen you. Walk in, she's talking about having a mohawk. Amen. They could look good on her. Say amen. I had no idea. No idea. But you know what she needs? She needs some sheep. Hey, amen. You know what your pastor and his family needs? Sheep. What I've seen. Funerals after funerals, you know what I watch? Churches get together, do meals. And I, I watch people that don't go to church. And I sit back and I watch them. Brother Josh, they, they show up at church and they eat the same food everybody else does, but they just act a little standoffish. You know what I've come to find out? They don't know how good the flock is. You never know how good yours is until you desperately need it. I want to challenge you tonight. The best defense 
for fear. The best defense for the devil coming into Emmanuel Baptist Church, I'll tell you what the answer is, is each other. Say, oh, preacher, I don't like them. Preacher, I don't like them. Can I say this? We're all sheep. I don't know tonight, maybe you're here and you're overwhelmed. You've got fear. There's other sheep that's been here. They know exactly what you feel. They know how overwhelmed you are. I feel the Holy Ghost. They know how bad you're burdened down. You say, preacher, why do I keep coming to church? Because we need each other. So I'll preach where everything's good now. Just give it a few days. I want to help you tonight. If you need something tonight, the best thing you can do is get in this altar and have the sheep gather around you. Say, hey, I'm there for you. I know how you feel. We need each other. Our kids are relying on us, mom and dad to get over our differences, to get over how somebody hurt us and love each other and be there for each other. So I'll preach your times will change in the next few weeks. It may change. It may not go the way we want to. But we are still just sheep. And no matter the outcome, we're going to be here for each other. We're standing, preacher, you come. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.